Today I'm going to be building this LEGO Speed Champion 76920, the Ford Mustang Dark Horse. And this set is rated aged 9 plus. Now my first impressions of the set is that it looks a little bit boxy, a little bit bulky. And if you turn the set around, you can see more of it, obviously. I do think the back end looks really nice. Hopefully that looks good once I built it. But there's a picture of the real car. Yeah. Like it is, you know, it's a quite rectangular in a sense with its obviously curved edges. But... I don't know, just looking at it on the box, hmm, a bit sceptical about this one. And I've just noticed on the box it has this official Ford licensed product sticker on there. That's pretty nice. Inside the box then of course you'll get your instruction booklet and don't forget to scan your QR code to get your 20 VIP or insider points, so that's a nice little freebie there. You get four numbered bags, Still using plastic here. Lego seem to be in between using paper bags and plastic bags. Here's our sticker sheet. And this is the smallest sticker sheet yet yeah, out of the other vehicles I've built recently. And I've done reviews of these on the channel, so do check them out as well. And we've got this other little bag for different wheel inserts you could use. And then the large car base there as well. Now, first things first, I really like the colour scheme. Dark blue, yes, it's good. But something I don't like is the dark grey, because to me, it feels a little bit out of place. I feel like all this should be black, and then it's like a consistent stripe. Now, the picture of the real car on the box is a little bit hard to see from the angles here, but I think you can just about make it out there. To me, that looks black, and then the bit across the roof there, which is dark blue on the car, in Lego form, I think it's actually black on the real thing. So I feel like that should have been black, and definitely that, but... I'm sure you could easily swap it out if you wanted to get the parts, because all these parts do exist in black. Although, honestly, I don't know if I can be bothered to swap it out. But apart from that, looking at the front, pretty iconic. You kind of know what, that's, what this is supposed to be. And then with the back as well. Especially from a side angle like this. Like, yeah, they did a really good job of getting this right. And I don't want to spoil it, but the way that they built this up here, it's just clever. Some good parts usage, that's for sure. Ah, oh, yeah. It, it's good but interestingly when you build this car putting it together you don't kind of start from the bottom and work your way up you start off building the back and then the middle and then the front which is interesting you know everything comes together in the end and it all is all very solid there's a lot packed in here like looking at it from the outside i was thinking this, this one's gonna be a bit plain and boring isn't it really and sure it's not as car poor as exciting as some of the other speed champion sets we've got also, reviews for these cars on the channel as well, so do check them out after this one. But I kind of like how it's just like a regular, everyday civilian car sort of thing, and yeah, it's nice. Now, there is a couple of loose parts, potentially, like where if I was holding it like this, my finger was pressing against it. This tile here is only hold up with one stud, and, you know, it's a tile, so it doesn't have any really anti-stud, so it is a bit loose but that's just something to be mindful of. And it just kind of snaps back into place there. Again, a clever technique for how they got the headlights here at the angles. Very good at how all these slopes converge. Yeah, well done to the designers, that's for sure. I mean, I'm no car expert, and I've been out of the loop with Speed Champions for a while, but there was something about these that I thought, yeah, I need to get my hands on it, and I need to build it. Although it is a shame, look, you can see that mould mark there where it's been snapped off the sprue. Not good, Lego, that's happening more and more often these days. You know, the prices continue to go up. We expect good quality, especially when alternative brands don't leave things like that. So if you want to be the best Lego, you've got to deal with that because, you know, it's not good. Sure, it's only in one part of the element, but it's not really the point. It didn't used to be that bad, and now it kind of is because it's almost... You could almost say it's damaged to the part, if, you know, I'm being honest. The next thing I want to talk about is the use of stickers versus prints, which is something I've noticed whilst building these other two Speed Champions cars is that there doesn't seem to be any clear reasoning behind what parts are going to be printed and what parts are going to be stickered. Especially when, for example, these cheese wedges here, they're printed. But that's got a sticker on it. That's a sticker. That's a sticker. Although somewhere else, you know, that, that's a print there. But that, this this cheese slope here, the same shape and element as that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a sticker. That's a sticker. So these are nice prints. It doesn't, there's not really any clear rules. I don't know what they have to determine to decide that. I think if you're going to do it, either go all that one or the other. You know, give us good quality prints or good quality stickers. 
And with speed champions, especially because of the way Lego do their stickers and how they cut them, you kind of have to make some judgment calls when you're lining up stickers. For example, this sticker here, as you can see, I've pushed it as far over as I can instead of centering it like I would normally because of the black stripe detailing here, which I wanted to line up with the back windows. Because if I centered the sticker onto the part nice and evenly, then there'd be a blue gap and it would look a bit weird. And some sets you can kind of get away with it, but some others, you know, you're going to have some weird gaps. This car also features some interior detailing, which is nice to see. They don't just leave it with a seat and a steering wheel. There is actually something in there. So you've got the seat, some console and some dashboard displays, seating for two minifigures that will fit in there side by side. Comfortable looking chairs as well. That's pretty nice. With the gear stick in there as well. And then the minifigure included. It's just a regular person. You know, I mean, they do come with a helmet if you want to do a bit of racing, but they got some... Ford Mustang, Dark Horse branding, looks like some merch in universe. Maybe they're a big fan of the brand because it's like a hoodie and um, with the logo on the back. Pretty basic. I don't know if I like it, but, you know, it's nice to have some branding in, in Lego form. Although, of course, the problem with the Speed Champions these days is the cars are so big, they're almost out of scale with minifigures. I mean, if you put it like that, the minifigure is absolutely tiny compared to the car. But that's nothing new from what we've seen with other sets. Another thing I noticed when building this set is the new Trans Black. Well, it's not that new, but it's one of the first times I've really seen it. Because here yeah, it is transparent, but it's very dark now, and it is almost completely blacked out. Same with the front windscreen here. I mean, the real thing also does have a dark windscreen on that box image there. But yeah, it looks like it's like limo tinted or something. But you know, that's just a small nitpick. I think it still looks nice. But yeah, the... The main thing I would have changed is just swap these dark grey parts for black. That would have been a cleaner look. It just looks a bit out of place to me. And this car is very low. It has very little ground clearance, as you can see from the bottom of the wheel to the bottom of the car there. It is kind of smoothed off with the tile, but if you're driving this around on a carpet or something, it might get a bit stuck. Driving on the smooth desk here, no problem at all. As for the spare parts, you do get some of the basics, and you also get another set of the inserts for the wheels if you want to swap out your rims for your wheel you can do that i went for the ones as standard on the box but it's nice that you get the other sets included as well but do i think it's worth 21 pounds here in the uk in terms of value um there's a lot of parts packed in here it feels pretty solid it's not just like a outer shell or anything a lot of small parts involved but i think because it looks so plain and basic i don't think it is worth 21 pounds if i'm being honest like i feel <sighs> Yeah, conflicted, because you got the other Speed Champions cars. In fact, all three of these cars, including this one, all these cars cost the same price. Obviously, this one's a Technic set, but it is a lot bigger. This one, a F1 racer there, pretty nice. And then you got the Audi e-tron as well. Like, they're all exciting race cars. Then you got this kind of regular civilian-style car. I don't know. It feels like it's in a different league to me, so I'm not sure if that should affect the price. But if you're like me, I always wait for Lego to go on sale and I didn't pay full retail price for it. I paid £16, which is where I think the value is for this, to be honest with you. So what do you think about this new Speed Champions car? Let me know in the comments. Is it one you plan to be getting or do you have it already? And maybe you think something different to me. Or are you going to swap out the dark grey for black? Are you happy as it is? Tell me in the comments and I'll see you next time for the next Lego review. Bye for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the other videos on this channel or on one of my other channels as well. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends.